Hey, Center of Grace family, it's good to be back with you again on Wednesday. We're going to talk more about this image that we introduced last week of the trellis. Um, and before we get into that, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to think back in your mind to maybe a time where you had a picture of something that you needed to build, but you didn't have any instructions for it. Maybe it was a, a bookshelf, maybe it was a bike or something like that for your kids. Um, but but have you ever been in a situation where you needed to build something, you needed to put something together, you had a picture of it in your mind or, or maybe a, a literal picture of it, but you didn't have the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it? Well, sometimes I think that can be what it's like in our relationship with God. So last week we introduced this picture of the trellis. I, I talked about how um, the trellis in Latin, literally that word means a rule or a straight stick. And we talked about how a trellis is designed in life to hold fruit. Think about like one of those, one of those tomato planters. The goal is that the tomato plant would grow up and that the fruit would hang off of the planter. And that's the way that spiritual disciplines are supposed to be. It's supposed to be like a trellis that we set up in life so that fruit can be born <clears throat> for the sake of others. But you don't have a trellis just for the sake of having a trellis. And you don't do spiritual disciplines just for the sake of doing spiritual disciplines. You do spiritual disciplines to deepen your community and your intimacy with God, with one another, and, and so that the life of Jesus may be made more manifest in and through your life. But here's the thing. Last week when we introduced that picture, one of the things that we didn't do is give you any instructions, any help on how to do some of these things. And remember that we talked about there were three vertical kind of roots to, to help us in our relationship with God in particular, sacred reading, prayer, and the Sabbath. And I thought what we'd do over the next three weeks is just spend a week focusing on each one of these. And so today, we're going to talk about how to do sacred reading. When I am sitting down in my devotions to, to read through the scriptures, um, I basically ask myself three questions. I ask myself, what does it say, what does it mean, and what is the Spirit saying to me? So, first, what's it say? Second, what's it mean? And third, <clears throat> what's the Spirit saying to me? And this third question is oftentimes the hardest. And just to remind you, for this second question, you don't have to have a theology degree to understand what it means. We'll talk more about that in a second. But I think the third question is oftentimes the hardest because sometimes I think we get into this habit of thinking that God probably doesn't want to talk to me. But the bottom line is that couldn't be further from the truth. All over the scripture, God says that he loves to speak to his people. Think about Isaiah 30 verse 21, for example. When you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Or that moment when Elijah goes out onto the, uh, the mountain and he hears God speak in the still small voice. Or like we saw a couple weeks ago in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul prays that the Ephesians would have the Spirit of God poured out upon them so that their, the eyes of their hearts might be enlightened, that they might be able to know what it is that God wants to say to them. All over the scripture, God is speaking to his people and he's still speaking to us through his word each and every day. And that's one of the reasons why sacred reading is such an important thing. So what's it say? What's it mean? And what's the Spirit saying to me? But, but God likes to speak to us about four things. And we, we actually talked about this a few weeks ago. The Spirit likes to say things to us about identity, whether it's our own identity um, or God's. The Spirit likes to tell us the truth about ourselves and the truth about who God is. The Spirit also likes to talk to us about what we value or what we love because our loves in a fallen world get misordered and the Spirit likes to put the right values on the right things. So he likes to tell us about the things that we ought to love and maybe we don't. The Spirit also likes to talk to us about our attitudes. And then finally, he likes to talk to us about our behavior. But a lot of times, that's where we end up. We just start there and end there. But the Spirit a lot of times wants to talk about these three things which really deeply affect the way that we live our lives. But what is the Spirit saying to you? Sometimes when I'm asking myself this third question, I like to think about this quote from one of Shakespeare's sonnets. In his 23rd sonnet, he, he's talking as a, 
as a, a person who's writing to uh, his beloved. And he, he writes this. He says, Oh, learn to read what love hath writ, to hear with eyes belongs to love's fine wit. What Shakespeare's basically saying there is that when you get a love letter from your spouse or uh, you get a, a letter of encouragement from a friend and you're reading through it, you need to learn how to use your eyes as ears. What is that person saying to you? And the same is true when you pick up the Bible. What is the Spirit saying to you? And so today, what I thought we'd do as we just wrap up our time, and I want to encourage you, when you shut this video off, spend some real time doing this, because we don't have a ton of time in this video to do it. But ask yourselves, your, yourself these three questions, and think about, on that third question, think about these four things in regards to Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 8. Listen to God's word. It says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person is like a shrub in the desert who will not see any good come. God continues, he says, That person will dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Verse 7, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when the heat comes. For its leaf leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. What I'd encourage you to do over the course of the next few days, and even just today, would you shut off this video and take 10 to 15 minutes to just think through those three questions and those four things on that third question with regard to, to what God might be doing and wanting to say to you. Maybe you'll spend some time thinking about how there's this, what does it say? That it's comparing the life of one who trusts in the opinions of men or the strengths of men or the the wisdom of the world, when we trust in those things, we think that our life is going to turn out one way and it ends up turning out another way. Maybe some experiences in your own life will come to mind. And then, what is God wanting to say to you about when we actually trust in Him? What, what does trust in Him really look like? What would it mean for me to trust in God in every area of life? Remember, discipleship is the process of moving from belief or from unbelief to belief in Jesus in every area of life. So what would it look like for me to trust Jesus in that area and in that area and in that area? What might my life be like? What would it look like for, for me to be able to send my shoots out into, into the water so that even when drought comes, I might still be able to be fruitful? What would that look like? How is God speaking to you in the midst of this about your identity, about who you are and who he wants you to be, about what you value? about your attitudes, about your behavior. What is God saying to you in regard to that? But that is part of the process of how you might do some sacred reading. So I'd encourage you, get a, get a journal that looks like this and just spend 10 to 15 minutes a day writing down, what's it say? What's it mean? What is God saying to me? Just jot those things down and see how your life with God might grow and deepen. Church, we love you. Look forward to seeing you again on Sunday.